If you're looking for a budget field monitor today, we'll take a look at the Field World LUT 11S, and I think it might be what you're looking for. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Craig Kilgore, and if you're new here, I make videos about filmmaking, filmmaking gear, and just technology in general. So if that's what you're into, then you found the right place to be. Stick around. Today, I want to talk to you about the Field World LUT 11S. Now, Field World did send this to me, but I'm under no obligation to say anything positive about their products or about this monitor. I just want to express that all of my opinions today are my own opinion. So let's get into it. Field World has released this $299 director's monitor. And I, right now, my opinion is that this thing is a steal. Let's take a look at the specs. So the Field World LUT 11S is a 10 inch monitor with full touchscreen. It is an ultra bright 2000 nit display. It has an included SD card slot so that you can preload up to 50 different LUTs right into the monitor. It has dual SPF 970 slots so that you can install dual batteries to help power the monitor. It has both SDI input and SDI output. It has two HDMI inputs, which allows you to switch between monitoring two different cameras. And of course it displays waveform, vector scope, false colors, peaking, zebras, and all the other standards that you would get with the monitor. So before I ramble on too much, let's go ahead and unbox it. Let's take a look at it and go over its features. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Field World LUT 11S and see what's in the box. So right away you can see it comes with this mounting bracket. I'm not so sure I'll need that. Uh, let me just take a look and see if it has a quarter 20 at the bottom that I would most likely use by putting it on a tripod or, or a light stand. Go ahead and take this out of the package. You can see this thing is massive. It is a full 10 inches. I think it's 10.1 inches, but let's take a look at the features on it. So you can see here on the bottom, you have a quarter 20. I don't see myself using that bracket for anything. Um, maybe the bracket's good for mounting it and being able to swivel the monitor. But anyway, here at the bottom, you have three HDMI ports, uh, two are HDMI in. There's HDMI input one and HDMI input two. So I'm not quite sure if you're able to display both images at the same time, but we'll give that a try and see how it works out. And here's your HDMI output. You also have the DC in so that you're able to power the monitor without using the batteries if you want to use direct power and here on the left you have your sdi input and sdi output and lastly on the left here you have tally looking here at the left side of the monitor you have another quarter 20 mount and as you can see here you have two jacks one is for audio out so that you can monitor audio and the other one here is dc power out so you have eight volts out so that you can power other devices on the right side of the monitor here you have another quarter 20 mount and an sd card slot now i'm not sure if that's for just loading luts i imagine it's just for loading luts i don't believe that this monitor allows you to record to a uh, sd card but we'll we'll take a look at that on the top here you have a power button and you have three function keys f1 f2 and f3 typically you're able to map these keys to whatever function you'd like so i definitely will be taking a look at that and see how well that works and then also you have your menu selection wheel here on the right and on the back of the monitor here you have two slots for mpf batteries so you can mount two you could put two mpf batteries here on the back to power the monitor and also power a secondary device because this right here acts as a secondary sort of a dummy battery i'll mount a receiver to this and i'll be able to power the receiver and the monitor just using these two slots here and not having to worry about having a separate battery to power the monitor versus a wireless transmitter or receiver i already have a couple field world monitors that actually have this similar function here and being able to mount an hdmi or, or wireless video receiver on the back is just a godsend so if you look here i can go ahead and show you that i can mount two batteries on the back here if i want i can go ahead and 
and add a wireless receiver to the bottom here and everything is mounted just like that in the box here let's take a look quickly and see what you get in the box of course you get a lens cleaning cloth some instructions and warranty information you get this mounting hardware that allows you to mount the monitor to the bracket that they included you get this power adapter that goes here on your power supply so you have dc power to the monitor and they've also included an hdmi cable it's mini hdmi and full hdmi on on the other end i don't need this so i'll set it aside my camera all my cameras use full hdmi but it is nice of them to include that cable you never know when you might need it so i'm gonna put all this aside and get that monitor mounted real quick so mounting it looks pretty easy it's got these rubber covers here that go on top to help protect your monitor from your hardware from scratches and then you can just run this through the side screw it right into the mounting hole there i'll go ahead and get the other side there you have it i actually might kind of actually might use this because without it i don't have the swivel ability and being able to change the viewing angle like you would if you just used a quarter 20 at the bottom so being able to stand this on a table on it on its own it's pretty handy and if you want it you can still have mounting options at the bottom of the bracket there to uh, mount it however you wish. So I, I thought I wouldn't use this, but I, I think it's going to definitely come in handy and especially for this video. So now I can just prop it up like this here. So all I need to do now is reattach HDMI cable to my wireless receiver. And typically I'd want a smaller HDMI cable, but this will still work for our demonstration purposes and I'll plug this into the bottom and there you have it. So I have this camera set up in front of me. It has a wireless transmitter on it. The wireless receiver is connected to the Holly, I'm sorry, to the field world monitor here. And that's how you're able to see me as I work here. I also have a camera up above me and that is there so that you guys can see the options on the monitor. One of the first things I noticed was the fact that you can see here battery one and battery two. It shows you the power level. Just for kicks, I disconnected a battery earlier to see if it would run off of one battery. Because believe it or not, there are tons of products out there that have the two battery option and they require both batteries to be installed. And I'm happy to say when I took one battery off, I took it off while the monitor was live and I didn't lose power. I was able to hot swap the battery, so to speak. And being able to do that, again, it's it's just a blessing because uh, sometimes in the middle of production, if you're doing an interview or something like that, you don't wanna stop the person from speaking. You don't wanna lose that moment that's happening. So being able to just hot swap a battery and keep going without disturbing any of the recording that's going on, it's just a godsend. So anyway, let's get into the menu here. Um, you tap the scroll wheel here at the top. It's actually a button also. And you tap it again. You can scroll with it. You can scroll through the options. Or you can use the, the touch assist. I prefer the touch screen. It just seems a little bit faster. But if you wanted to, again, like I said before, you could tap the button up top. It locks it. And the touch does not work. So you don't accidentally change any of your settings. So there's a, a slew of options here in the monitor. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen my other field world video. I have a couple field world monitors and I did a review earlier. I'll have the link in the description below. So if you want, you can check that video out. That monitor is pretty incredible. And especially for the price, it's like $169 at the time I made that video. I'm not sure what the price is right now, but anyway, you guys can check it out. So let's take a look at this. So I'll go ahead now and walk through the, some of the options in the menu system, some of the features of this monitor. If you click the assist here, you'll have a lot of your display options listed here so if you hit analysis and turn that on it turns everything on so you have your let me click off of that you have your vector scope your waveform and your histograms all displayed quickly and quickly and efficiently if for those of you who like to have everything displayed if you don't wish to have that on you can just turn it off and you can turn on things one at a time so i can turn on the waveforms display it rgb yuv and or just why I would use the RGB. And then if you wanted, you could turn on 
your vector scope. So you have that right there in the upper right hand corner. Again, you can just turn that off if you want it. Maybe you just want the histogram. And if you want, you can go in and then turn on the histogram features. So there you have that nicely displayed. I'm a big fan of focus assist, so I can turn that on. I tend to use red, but you can choose what color that you would like your focus assist to be on. And you can change that level here. As you can see, it's starting to show a little red around my glasses. Um, hopefully you guys can see that on this monitor here. So it helps you to see exactly what's in focus. You can next go to your audio meters. If you want to display that, you can turn on your audio levels. Um, there they are on the upper left hand corner. Looks like uh, this is something that I would typically have on. I, I just like seeing as much information as I can, but I don't like to see all the information because everything is not necessary for me. So having these options, being able to switch back and forth is just, it's just awesome. Switching out to zebras, you can turn your zebras on and you can adjust the zebra levels here to give you an idea of where in your image you might be losing some information of what might be clipping and what might not be clipping. And then again, you can go down to check field, turn that on and you can choose what colors you would like that to display as also. Uh, and every now and then I like to mess around with false colors. So again, being able to completely adjust the monitor to exactly the features you want makes it makes it so much easier. Next, if you go down the marker, you can select what type of grid you would like to have, if any, on your monitor here. I tend to use a three by three grid, but I don't use that all the time. A lot of the time I have the crosshair and the cinema guides on. So I'll let you take a look at that. Go ahead and turn off, turn off the crosshatch and go down the safe areas. Of course, I'm gonna choose a 16 by nine, turn that on and you can see here on the monitor, the 16 by nine safe area to let you know how to frame up your shot. Next up, you have the crosshair. I usually turn that on also. I use the, that red so you can see where the center of the image is because sometimes your eyes could be a little off and you're just just and you're just guessing and doing it on the fly. I don't always have that on, but it's it's a nice option to have. And a lot of times I do use the cinema guides. So I'll turn that on. I'll make that. Let's see. We could do that white, purple. Again, you could choose what colors you would like. Use that red and as you can see the outline of the image. Of course, if you wanted, you could switch between the various modes. There's four by three to give you an idea what that would look like. Because again, sometimes depending on what your camera settings are and what you're shooting for, it can be difficult to kind of guess where everything is in the frame. So these cinema guides can be very, very helpful. I'll switch that back to 16 by now, nine, because I'm usually at 16 by nine. If you go down to image, there are various uh, options here to choose from. Also, you have the scan mode, scan and over scan, under scan and over scan. You have your aspect ratio, I'm usually shooting at 16 by nine. And then you have anamorphic de-squeeze on. So if you were, to be using something like uh, anamorphic lens, you could actually go in here and see what the image would look like de-squeezed before being on your camera, or I'm sorry, on your computer or, or whatever you're using to, to edit to de-squeeze the image and, and finally see what it looks like. Um, I'm not using the anamorphic lens, but the option is there. Let me turn that back off. Y'all, we have mirror option where you can flip the image if you need to be horizontal mirror, mirror so I can flip the image if you needed your arm or, or something in the image maybe you have some text and you needed to show a certain kind of way for me this looks backwards I can turn that off you can read the image as intended for whatever reason if you needed to also flip it vertically you could also do that if, if that's something for whatever reason you need to do I mean maybe you're shooting with your camera upside down and your camera doesn't automatically flip the image for you. You have some image zoom here, so that's always an option. Maybe it could help you with focus to maybe you're trying to hit a certain detail there. I'll stop zooming into my face because you don't really need to see a close up of my face. And then you have the option of freeze. So I'm still moving here, as you guys can see with this camera, but the image is frozen. I'm not quite sure the usefulness or why you would use that. It's not something I've ever wish I had. 
but I'm sure there's a use case out there for being able to freeze it here. And then next up you have your user options, some HDR settings, depending on your camera and, and whether you're shooting, I shoot Sony, so you may be shooting an S-Log3 or S-Log2, being able to turn those on just to help display the image correctly can really assist you in, in your shooting and in your creativity. There are times, depending on, you gotta be careful how you set up your monitor because there are times that, you know, when I first started, I would have my computers on my camera set up and turn the monitor on and the monitor was displaying colors and in contrast a lot differently than what my camera was showing me. So being able to match the monitor to the camera display is gonna help you immensely, immensely. You have an SD card here, SD card slot on the side of the monitor here. And now, like I said, you can load LUTs in there. And if you're shooting with an S-Log, in my case, S-Log, um, and you're, you're, you're shooting and knowing later on in post-processing, you, you're gonna have a certain look that you're gonna be loading a certain LUT. If you can load that LUT into the monitor and, and it helps you know what the final image is gonna look like. So you can adjust your settings. Shooting some of these formats that offer more dynamic range, it's nice to be able to, to load up a LUT and know exactly what your image is gonna look like in the end. So you can make adjustments on the fly, especially if you don't have a lot of experience shooting. For example, S-Log3, you, you can shoot that footage and then when you get back, to your studio or back to your desk and you you load in the let you want it, it may not look exactly like you want because you don't quite have the settings set to give you the best outcome for that LUT. so being able to do that to being able to load that up can you know definitely be helpful um, if you go down to display setup this allows you to adjust the brightness and contrast of the display i haven't quite tweaked that exactly how i wanted but that's always an option. Those are always options that you that you have. If you go down to color, you can choose your color space, Rec 709 and DCI-P3, BT-2020, and your color temperatures, things like that. So it's incredible that they added, they can included that in the monitor because not every monitor, I've had several monitors and they all have different features. And this seems to have more features than any monitor I've used so far. If you go into system here, you can adjust how things are set up with the monitor. For example, how the wheel acts here. I, I'll set it to volume because I want to be able to change the volume by scrolling the, the wheel here. You go to shortcut, you can program your F, your function buttons here up top. So F1, F2, F3, you can program them to be quickly whatever mode or whatever function you need it to be. You can turn tally on and off and turn that off for now. Here you have your inputs, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and SDI 3. I actually have another camera hooked up. Let me go ahead and turn that on real quick. So I just turned on the second camera I have here. Let's see, I haven't used it with this system just yet. Please check video source. I don't think I have the camera. Okay, I just turned the camera on for that. So we'll give it a second to boot up. So I have this wireless camera set up over here. There looks seems to be some sort of lag here. I'm not quite sure if that is due to the field world monitor or this webcam style camera I'm using. It's got some automatic features here with gestures that allow it to, to zoom in and out, things like that. But Man, that, that looks kind of terrible. Hopefully it's just the web camera and not the monitor. I don't have another camera to try. Um, let me switch this back. Let's see if it's happening on HDMI, on HDMI 1. Yeah, one is very clean here, very good. See if I can find another camera. I don't have, I have just the two cameras here and this webcam, but I'm kind of curious if I can connect up maybe an iPhone or something and see if I can get uh, a better image because I'm kind of disappointed in that there and I don't want to blame Field World for that. I want to do some testing and again, see see what happens and let you guys know. But so far, so good. I'm happy with this. Um, having the two inputs is, uh, that's definitely, something that's cool that, that, that that's an option to to have um, i've never had a monitor give me that option so hopefully this is an option that 
can come in handy for me and hopefully it performs like it should. Okay, so what I did now, I disconnected that webcam that I was using and I think the issue is the webcam. That's something I'll have to look into at another time. So what I did this time was I connected my iPhone 15 Pro Max to the, uh, the Holly, I'm sorry, the, the Field World Monitor using this uh, cable that's USB-C on one end and this HDMI on the other end. And I believe it's a built-in capture card. Let me flip that, let me see. It may not be a capture card. UHB-C to HDMI cable. So that allowed me to send the video signal from my phone to the monitor, just so we can test the other function of being able to switch between the HDMI inputs. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that now. I'm gonna go to input, HDMI 2, and there's the, the iPhone. Now, the downside is you're gonna see all of the iPhone markings you know the the information on screen but if i hit record it may be different let me take a quick look yeah unfortunately you're still going to have the ace the the markings from the iphone because it's not outputting what we call clean video so it's going to have the on-screen markings here but i can take that video later on that's being recorded and use it for for this video or, or some other project but on screen you're going to have the markings here from the camera but at least that gives me an idea it lets me know that it's not the field world monitor that's causing the stuttering issues it was actually the webcam itself so if you had two cameras you could switch between the two of them and see you know monitor the footage however you wanted to and uh that's pretty awesome okay so that's the monitor in a nutshell i really didn't want to make this video 20 minutes long but it looks like it's turned out to be 20 minutes long so for those of you who stuck around this far i really appreciate it if this video has been helpful to you at all please please hit the like and subscribe button it really helps out the channel and it also helps you out so that you don't miss any of my future videos if you're interested in this monitor or any other gear I do have links below for you to check out. It'll take you right to the, the Amazon product page and you can pick one up for yourself if that's what you're looking to do. If you have any questions about the monitor, please leave some questions in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond to any questions that you guys have. And that's it for today. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.